Welcome to the Rise and Grind Workshop. If you're new here, my name is Ryan. So for today's project, I'm gonna walk you through the whole process of how we utilize a flatbed UV printer alongside a CO2 laser engraver and the print cut feature inside a light burn. And we're gonna make this really cool rewards jar. So if you're new to UV printing or laser engraving, buckle up. I'm gonna teach you how to use this little ZZ2C from Jay's Printer Parts. And then we're gonna cut it out over there on that Omtec Pronto 40. So to start out with this project, we're gonna use a really popular piece of material, and this is a three millimeter piece of Baltic birch. Right out the gate, you're gonna notice this rectangle and a grid pattern of a bunch of tiny holes. This here is actually a vacuum table, and that's what's gonna help secure this material down nice and flat. This print area happens to be 13 and a half by 23 and a half inches. To get started, I found a scrap piece of three millimeter Baltic birch, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put this right here in the corner. Now, even though the ZZ2C does have a vacuum table, you'll notice I used a little bit of this green tape. We like to use this frog tape. That's just gonna make sure your Baltic birch stays extremely flat. With a UV printer, just like your laser engraver, you really wanna keep this thing flat and in focus. Now with our material secured down to the print area, let's go ahead and jog that under the auto focus bar. That's what you see right here. All I'm gonna do is lift this table up until it automatically stops. That is the autofocus portion of this UV flatbed printer. We're now ready to print. The way this UV printer works, this is a special formulated UV ink, and that bright purple light you see right there on the front, that's an ultraviolet light. This thing is gonna spray a white base coat down, then you're noticing that color come on top of the white. Then as soon as that UV light hits that ink, it is curing it dry to the touch instantly. And if you guys wanna know more about the ZZ2C UV flatbed printer, I'll have a discount code as well as a link down below in the description. So just like that, this comes out of the UV printer and this is gonna blow your minds. You can literally touch this, it's dry to the touch, that is ready to go. In order to use a laser engraver to cut the outline, you're gonna notice a registration mark here in the corner, and we have another registration mark up here in the top corner. Let's remove this from the UV printer, take that over to the laser, and I'm gonna show you how we cut this out. Once you're satisfied with your print job, go ahead and place your material inside of your laser engraver. And again, we're gonna be referencing those two registration marks. So my first order of operations, I wanna go ahead and get this laser in focus. Now this is really important. A laser engraver does not have a brain. The brain behind a laser engraver is right here between your own two ears. You are programming and telling this machine what to do. Clearly, we printed an image on that material. Now we've drug it over here and just set it on this laser table. This laser has no idea where to cut. That's what those registration marks are. We're gonna jump over inside of a software called Lightburn. That's what we use here in the workshop for our lasers. And I'm gonna show you how that print cut feature works. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is get that red dot laser indicator over here on either registration mark. We'll go ahead and just start with this lower front one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use this control panel and jog my laser head relatively close to that registration mark. Now the bonus to aligning your first mark, you can get down in there with your hands and move the material directly into the center of that registration mark. And just a pro tip, depending on the controller you have, sometimes getting that red dot laser indicator aligned to the dead center of that registration mark can be a little difficult or tricky. You'll notice on that first registration mark, I just reached down in there with my hands and got that thing perfectly centered. Now I want you to remember, you can only do that for the first registration mark. We're gonna jump over to the computer and we're gonna set that position or lock it in. If we were to move that material from any point moving forward, we would lose that registration mark. So just be very careful with that. So inside of Lightburn, we imported in our cut file, which is a PDF. And you're gonna notice that registration mark down here in the lower left and the upper right. We have started in the lower left and we already have our laser on this position. So what I want you to do is zoom into that registration mark, grab it, make sure you right click and group it. Then you're gonna notice down here T1 and T2, orange and blue, go ahead and select T1. That's gonna create a tool path and not a cut path. Go ahead and go up to your second registration mark, grab that, right click it, group it, and let's go ahead and name that T1 as well. All right, moving back to position number one. 
Inside Lightburn, navigate to the top area and you're gonna find laser tools. Go ahead and locate the print cut and then to the right of that, go ahead and hit start wizard. The first option it gives you, press to set the first target position. Remember guys, we already have our laser indicator pointed on that first registration mark. And over here inside of Lightburn, we're wanting to tell the laser, yes, that is our first position. Go ahead and set that. Now go ahead and click the set button and you will notice that registration mark turned a bright, bold red. That means the laser now knows that's where the first position is. You're now gonna notice two other options. So remember, do not move your material from this point moving forward. We just told the laser where that first position is. We now need to get this laser head all the way back over here to that second position. Let me show you how we do that. Head back to Lightburn and go ahead and highlight that second target position. Now this box will make more sense when it says jog to the selection. That's what we're gonna go ahead and select. Once we select jog, watch what the laser does automatically moving very close to that second position. Using your control panel on the laser engraver, you will now see we have our laser indicator dead center of that second registration mark. Now that we have our laser indicator up here on that second position, now it makes sense to go ahead and hit the set second target position. You'll notice that turns a nice deep blue color. We are not doing any scaling. Our file was already set to size. So we're gonna now do the align output, no scaling. Now, if you did everything right, this laser should know exactly where it's gonna cut. I always like to do a quick sanity check over in Lightburn, you have two framing options. I'm gonna cover those really quick and show you how that works. Inside of Lightburn, you have two framing options. Right now, we went ahead and highlighted the shape we're gonna do our vector cut on, and I wanna see an exact tracing. So I'm gonna use this little frame down here, and this is called the rubber band boundary framing, and that's what we're gonna go ahead and click right now. Right now, you're gonna notice that red dot is simply tracing just on the inside of our graphic. I do have a small bleed on this. That's exactly what you're looking for. Again, I call this a quick sanity check. Always run this prior to cutting. That way you don't ruin the material you've already printed. And for this project, we're gonna be using our new filter box, and this is their Expand XF2. This unit has two blowers on it, and as our shop grows, we can expand all the way up to six. This is gonna take our laser fumes, bring it through some HEPA filters, and then recirculate clean air back into our shop. We are no longer having to exhaust our laser out the window. With our material cut, let's go ahead and remove that from the laser engraver, and you can now see we have a nice shape. So this piece that we just cut out is gonna act as the back of the rewards jar. We now need to put a small spacer on the outside edge and then prepare our acrylic to put on the top of that spacer piece. Now there is obviously a wide variety of ways to create a stacked or layered sign, but for today's project, we're gonna be using some of this 3M double-sided tape this happens to be model 467MP, and this is a very, very thin double-sided tape. We are just using another scrap piece of three millimeter Baltic birch, and I'm just gonna go ahead and position this double-sided tape. I'm gonna keep a little bit of slack in it. I'm just gonna start at one edge, and then slowly work my way to the backside, trying to eliminate any air bubbles or air pockets. Remember to use some type of squeegee or roller to make sure you get some nice adhesion on the back side of this. Once you're satisfied, let's go ahead and flip that over because this needs to be double-sided. So now we have our spacer material loaded into the laser and we have our 3M double-sided tape on both sides. Now that we have our spacers cut, let's go ahead and remove them. Always double check to make sure you got a clean pass-through cut. We're looking good to go there. We are making great progress. We have our backer piece cut and we now have our two spacers. And yes, I cut two of these. And when I assemble this, you'll see why. Now for this part of the project, we'll be switching over to some acrylic and the UV printer. We are just using some scrap colors we don't use very often. This is just an eighth inch sheet of like a rose or coral colored acrylic. And just like for the Baltic birch, our process is the same. We're gonna square our eighth inch acrylic right up here on the front of the bed. And we're gonna go ahead and activate that vacuum table. And just like the Baltic birch, we're gonna feed that material under the autofocus sensor. And then we're gonna raise that bed up until it clicks. 
We're getting that clicking sound right now. That means we're all focused. And again, fresh off the UV printer, perfect prints, fully cured and dry, ready to be cut on the laser. So once again, nothing changes. We have two registration marks. We're on our first mark. We're gonna go ahead and set that in light burn. So just like last time, we're gonna go ahead and grab that first registration mark, head on up to laser tools, print cut, and we'll go ahead and select that wizard. And since we're already on that position, let's go ahead and hit set. That's gonna turn a nice bright red. Now let's go ahead and zoom out, zoom back in, grab that second registration mark, and now let's go ahead and jog it to that set position. So now that the laser indicator is on the second target position, let's go ahead and click set. And once again, that turns a deep blue slash purple. Let's go ahead and output this with no scaling. And just like always, let's do a sanity check and do a quick framing. And once again, double check to make sure you've got a clean cut through, which we do, and we'll start removing all these pieces. So we are nearing the finish line on this project. All we need to do now is cut that front piece, and we're using some 16th inch clear acrylic. I'm gonna throw a nice raster on the front and then give it a nice vector cut. All right, let's go ahead and remove this from the laser. Man, that really turned out fantastic. What do you guys think? Now you'll notice I left my paper on the front of this material and I just hit this really light. I'm just kind of going for a frosted glass or an etched look. There are a lot of different tips and tricks out there depending on the finished look you're looking for. We're gonna take this over to the table and clean this with a little bit of alcohol and see if that's the exact effect we're looking for. So at this point in the video, I would think it's pretty self-explanatory the direction we're headed in. We have our backer piece cut, which is right here. We UV printed this on three millimeter Baltic birch. Then we went ahead and cut two spacers out. Now the reason we went ahead and cut two of them, this is three millimeters Baltic birch, and this is an eighth inch thick acrylic. If I only used one piece of that three millimeter and then put that acrylic on the top side, I wouldn't have enough room for these little coins to actually go down inside of that jar. That is why we doubled up on these spacers. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting pretty darn excited. I wanna get this thing assembled and all put together. Let's get to it. And guys, when it's time to assemble your project, there's no right or wrong way to do this. If you wanna use a piece of cardboard and cut out a template that you can set that backer piece in and then get this spacer piece perfectly aligned, go right ahead. For a small skinny spacer with a lot of flex like this, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this freehand. Go ahead and peel up one side of the double-sided tape. So now you can see how simple this is. We have the backer piece, and then now we have our first spacer piece, and we went ahead and removed that first piece of double-sided tape. Now we'll go ahead and lay the next spacer piece on top of that. And now you should be able to see where these spacers have actually built up a nice gap here from that back piece, allowing for those coins to sit down in that front section. Now when it comes time to removing the paper off of the back side, remember that's gonna be pressed down onto this double-sided tape in the front. You do not wanna get any fingerprints on the back side, so be very careful at this point. And here's a pro tip. You're gonna to wanna to find yourself a rubber or neoprene roller like this. These work perfect anytime you're using a double-sided tape application. You can really roll this down and get some good pressure on it. And this is just a cheap roll of magnetic material with double-sided tape, and I picked this up from a big box store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I don't really recall. Go ahead and peel that double-sided tape off and secure that down wherever you would like. For this little guy, I think two strips 
will work perfectly fine. Well, let's go ahead and test this bad boy out. Magnets work. So now when your little one does well, you can give them a coin or a reward and they can go ahead and start filling up that reward jar. How cool is that? Got a little creeper, got a little bomb, have no idea who that guy is, got a little sword. You get the idea. Well, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that's going to be the end of this project. But at the end of the day, I'm really excited with how this turned out. I have been spending way too much time doing unboxings and going over all these different machines. I've really wanted to get out here and start showcasing what some of these different machines can do. So today I was able to show you how to utilize a flatbed UV printer, the print and cut feature inside of Lightburn, and utilizing a laser engraver to make a rewards jar or a layered stacked project like this. Go ahead and drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think of this project and also let me know what other projects you would like to see me do. Thanks for watching guys and we will catch you on the next video.